it's Christina Olson. I'm here at bodybuilding.com headquarters. We're going to do a workout back and shoulders. I'm a bodybuilding.com athlete and musician for Lay Destroy. Um, you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook, my personal accounts, or you can follow the music side on Instagram and Facebook as well. And I can provide you with more information um, about all that later on. So I'm just doing a little warm up right now on the treadmill. I just kind of like to get my blood flowing a little bit, get the joints nice and lubricated um, before I go on to do the workout. Sometimes I'll do all of my cardio up front because I know that I'm kind of lazy and that if I wait until the end, I'm probably not gonna do it. So, But for today, I'm just gonna do a few minutes of cardio and I'm about to wrap it up right now and then we're gonna go train um, back and shoulders. So. It'll be good. I'm going to be mainly on the cable machine for back um, and then dumbbells mostly for shoulders. And I am going to be doing um, my isolation lifts, which is single joint exercises, before I hit my compound lifts. So I like to do that so that I don't have to li lift super heavy on my compound lifts and I can get a little fatigue going on um, before hitting the bigger lifts. So it'll be fun. You guys have any questions for me yet? No? All right. Well, let's move on then. I've always got my water bottle here. So let's go over to the cable machines. It's going to be a good workout. I don't have my hair in a ponytail right now because I'm not going to be doing a lot of jumping around. Uh, sometimes I'll superset my exercises with, um, with jump rope or some high intensity training, but for the q and I'm just going to do it a little more low key, not a lot of uh, jump rope in between today. So. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of warm up sets at a low weight just to kind of prepare my body for what I'm about to do, the range of motion and get the muscles firing properly before I start increasing the weight. So, and for those of you, some of you are very experienced, so this might be just really boring for you, but for those of you who don't know, there's a difference between warm-up sets and working sets. So the goal with your warm-up sets is not to fatigue the muscles, but just to go through the range of motion. Um, and then I'll go into my working sets and I'll do about three or four working sets. So let's do a quick warm-up. Just make sure you get the, the machine to where you want it. And for this, I'm gonna grab pretty wide and you always want to make sure that your hands are even, right? Because you don't want one here and one here. That's weird. So always look to make sure your hands are nice and wide and even on both sides. And then just pull it down. So I'm not pulling it into my chest, you know, and hitting myself in my chest. It's just a little lower than the chin. Sometimes I'll get clients that do some pretty funny stuff when it comes to pull downs. Um, you want to make sure that you're not rolling your shoulders over and that your chest isn't caving in. You want to keep those lats, which is the part of your back that you're working right now, the main part, nice and open and wide. And again, just pulling down a little bit lower than the chin. And that's one warm up set. We'll do one more of those and then I'll, um, I'll increase the weight just a little bit for the next warm up set, and then I'll probably raise it to about 70 on there. Um, and my rep range today is anywhere between 12 to 15 reps, which is in the higher um, rep range. I'm mainly focusing on conditioning and not a lot of, uh, you know, big muscle building moves today. So, um, yeah. All right, so I'm at 40. I typically take about, it depends on my goals, but anywhere between 30 to 90 seconds of rest between sets. If I'm doing big lifts where I'm trying to like max out and hit my PR, you know, your personal record, then I'll take longer breaks in between. But for something like this, it doesn't really require long rest periods. Again, make sure your hands are in the right place. Nice and wide. Keeping that chest open, not rolling the shoulders. Exhaling as you're pulling down and exerting the effort and then release that breath as you go back up.
I'm sorry, I probably said that wrong. Inhaling as you go up, exhaling as you come down. Breathing is such a key part. And a lot of people struggle. I'm usually a really heavy breather, so I'll try not to breathe so hard so you guys don't have to hear me. So we have a question from Facebook from yeah. Stefan. He says, why don't you wrap your thumb on the lap hold down? Oh, um, there's different ways that you can grip the bar. So it's really personal preference. Um, when you wrap it, it's, it's, so there's different, there's different grips. There's like a hook or you can wrap it. For me, that's just what feels comfortable. It really, a lot of technique with exercise comes down to personal preference. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna increase the weight now. We're going up to 70, so this is a little heavier. Again, making sure my hands are in the right place. Nice and wide. There we go. So you will see me um, maybe lean a little bit just to make sure that the cable is coming down in the right place, but you won't see me self-spotting a lot, you know, leaning a lot and pulling down. You'll see me more coming straight down. Whew. And then it's okay to rest pause. If your muscles get fatigued, it's better to rest pause than to keep pushing yourself and compromise your form. So right now I'm rest pausing. And I'm gonna get a few more reps. I always tell my clients, if you're gonna start compromising your form, then just cut it because it's better to, better to stop early than hurt yourself and compromise your form. So, so we've got a question from YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, Emilio's Powerballer wants to know, what's your deadlift PR? <laughs> Well, I'm kind of recovering, so it's been, it's been a while. I had surgery, so um, I'm on the upswing now. But, you know, I was never big on keeping track of my PRs, but like 205, I'm tiny though, you know? I'm like 112, so when I, when I was at my leanest, right now I'm about 116, so that's almost two times my weight, so I'm pretty proud of that. And that was probably three reps at 200. Um, we have a question from Vanessa on Facebook. She said, what is your favorite back exercise and why? Ooh, favorite back exercise. You know, I do really love the pull downs because they can really help you with pull ups. So a lot of people say, practice pull ups, practice pull ups, and then you can do them. But really, if you focus on the pull downs and build your strength and your lats, um, because this really helps isolate it, right? The rest of your body isn't moving. And when you do pull ups, you can swing yourself, you can, you know, kind of lift your legs up and utilize your core a little bit more and get some momentum. But with this and with the pad here, holding your knees, it really comes from the back and the lats. And if you push yourself and start lifting some heavy weight on this, I guarantee that you'll be able to do pull ups with much more ease. So, yeah. All right, we're gonna do another working set here. So this makes two warm-up sets, two working sets. When I was at my strongest, um, before I was injured, I would, I could do full sets of like five reps as I was lifting in a lower rep range, so five to eight reps on this at 130. That's twice as much weight as I'm pulling right now, so I've lost quite a bit of muscle mass since I um, wasn't able to train for a little bit, but it's nice to work my way back up. 70 is a great starting point, especially for women. That's a good goal to be able to do you know, 12 to 15 reps at 70 pounds, you'll have some good muscle tone and development at that point, so. So this question is from Twitch. Uh, it's from Tomination Time. Christina, I've heard women can recover faster from high intensity workouts. 
I've heard the opposite as well. <laughs> uh, can women do a, a higher frequency of high intensity lifts than men due to better recovery? You know, I honestly don't know the answer to that question. My intuition uh, says probably not. We're probably the same. Um, but it might just be that women do more high intensity workouts like plyos and things like that because they're looking to stay leaner and have uh, more cardio in their workouts. So because they do it more frequently, they recover quickly. I have some clients that never do high intensity training. They do just big heavy lift strength training all the time for mass builders, you know, the men. And then as soon as I put them on a high intensity workout, they are dying. Like 30 seconds of mountain climbers in, they want to pass out. Meanwhile, my girls have been doing plyos like crazy and they would just smoke the guys. So, you know, I think it really comes to your conditioning, you know, and the more you do it, the better you get. Tiffany from Facebook said, aren't you afraid of getting too big? I seem to really get big when I work out like this. So, you know, there, there is something to that. We're not going to gain as much muscle mass as men, one. We don't have the same level of testosterone. Unless you are, you know, using enhancement drugs, it's just not going to happen. We're not made that way. Um, and it depends on, on your build, right? For women, we're all different. I'm very petite, so I can lift really heavy and gain a lot of muscle mass, and it sits well on my frame. But other women, like my sister, she kind of struggles with that because she's naturally a little bit bigger, and so she always feels like she doesn't want to get too bulky. Lifting weights isn't going to make you, you know, big and bulky, but if you have a good program that, that balances the cardiovascular activity and the high intensity interval training with the right rep range of training for what you're looking for, like the muscle toning, stick to a higher rep range if you're afraid that it's going to make you bigger. And if you gain the muscle mass and then you have a layer of fat over it, if you think it's going to just make you look bulky, there's a way to go about weight training and get the, the desired aesthetic that you're looking for. You know, you just really have to have a program that's built tailored to you. So. All right, so we're going to do one more working set. So this will be three working sets. And then maybe we'll move on to another one. All right, last one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Usually I make a lot of noise in the gym too, but I'm kind of quiet right now because I don't want you guys to hear me grunting and <laughs> being all crazy. So we have a few people in the Twitch chat asking who you are. They might have oh. in late. Hey, okay. So I'm Christina Olson. I am a bodybuilding.com athlete. Um, I'm an IFBB bikini pro. I don't compete anymore. And I'm also a musician. So I was a musician for about 10 years before I got into fitness. I'm going to have a new project called Lay Destroy right now. Um, I almost opened up for Pink on her world tour and um, had songs on MTV, wrote songs for major motion pictures, and um, played with some really good people. So I'm happy to be getting back into music right now. And Flaming Champions 92 wants to know if you're single. <laughs> You'll just have to follow me on social media and find out. <laughs> All right, so we are going to move on now. I actually accidentally makes my exercises up, but it doesn't matter. You can start with this one. Um, we'll go right here. So now I'm just prepping the cable machine for some straight arm pull downs. This is also a back exercise and more of an isolation. So um, single joint before I hit my compound lift. So I just need the straight bar. All right, and a thing to remember is Put your equipment back when you're done using it, please. I don't mind if people are on the phone in the gym. I get that. You know, we're all on our phone, switching our songs, looking at text messages. That's totally fine. Just try to put your dumbbells back and things like that. It's just common courtesy. All right. So always make sure that it's nice and locked when you're putting it on there because you can get some funny stuff happening. Make sure that, you know, it's always nice here on the carabiner because it can, uh, if it's not, you can have an accident. So 
I'm setting the weight right now at about 40. Because these are isolation exercises, this is going to be a little bit more difficult, so I'm not going to go as heavy with the weight. Do we have a question? No? Okay. All right, so straight arm pull down. So the goal with this is to really use your back, and you don't want to get a lot of movement at the elbow joint, okay? We're really looking to get only movement at this joint. You don't want your arms straight and locked out. You do want them at a slightly bent angle, but also keeping them locked. And you're gonna bend a little bit at the hips, and always bend your knees to have a nice athletic stance. When I say athletic stance, I don't mean like, you don't have to hit a squat, right? We just don't want our knees locked. So you just bend them a little so they're not locked. Bring it out and make sure you don't do anything weird with your neck either. We don't want the neck up here like this or scrunched down into our chest. So there we go, slightly bent, pulling it down and in. No movement at the elbow joint, it's all at the shoulders. to let the bar come back up to where it's about parallel to the floor. So you're not getting um, you know, the full extension and bringing it up to a point of weakness. You're really utilizing those muscles to stabilize it and stop the bar from going up um, above parallel to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> And with this, that when they were asking about the grip earlier, so with this, I did use um, the overhand grip where the thumb is wrapped around. You can do it like this. Sometimes I do, it depends. But for beginners especially, or even intermediate, and depending on how heavy you're going, you want to use um, the grip with your thumb around it because when you're holding it like this, it's easy for your hand to slip or for it to pop off, and then boom, you get whacked in the face and you lose a tooth. <laughs> Not good, not good. All right. Let's do another set. Again, arms parallel to the floor. Slight bend in those elbows. Parallel to the floor, down and in, really getting the contraction in the back right here. All right, so Teresa from Facebook says she really ap appreciates the tips to report proper form for best results. So oh, good, thank you so much. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. You can see so many people in the gym that have stellar physiques, but somehow they got those even when they're doing it with bad form. And the, it's really important to have good form. It's gonna enable you to train for much longer without any injuries, and um, you know, your overall health will be better in the long run. Yeah. Um, this is from Tomination Time. Uh, for cable pullovers, Christina, are you supposed to feel it in your triceps as well? For cable pullovers, or p the exercise I was just doing, are the pull downs. Um, you will feel it a little bit in your triceps because you are utilizing your arms, right? But if you feel it too much in your triceps, it might be because you're bending your elbows. Because um, so this exercise could easily turn into tricep push down. So here you are, without locking the elbows out. Now you're doing like a weird combo back and tricep, where this is just triceps, and then you will feel it a little bit in the back of your arms, but it should primarily be the shoulders. So just check your form a little bit and see if you are getting um, any kind of range of motion at the elbow joint. All right, Sherry from Facebook says, how do you avoid wrist and injuries when benching? Okay, so... Honestly, I used to have pretty weak wrists. I mean, it would hurt when I did push-ups, and um, eventually they get stronger. A way to kind of get through that threshold is to wrap it. I used to wrap my wrists all the time with, um, I use like shock doctor wraps, 
Uh, who else makes good ones? Uh, McDavid, I use their knee sleeves a lot, the compression sleeves. Any kind of prevention, right? So prevention is key. I played athletics as a, as a youth and could always have, you know, compression sleeves on different joints and things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't feel bad about wrapping your wrists for extra support. It will really help. Cool. All right, we're going to do another one. I'm going to increase the weight a little bit here. Okay, so again, we're not getting any range of motion at the elbow joint, but we do have it blent, bent, bent, blent. We have it blent slightly. <laughs> okay. See, no, there's no motion coming at the elbow joint. It's bent, but locked. <sighs> All right, Whew. that extra 10 pounds made a big difference. <laughs> Um, and also another thing you might want to try if it's hurting your wrists, you might want to try different grips on the bar. So, you know, you can do close grip, you can do wide grip, you can also use an easy bar which helps rotate the, your hands a little bit which can take the pressure off of certain areas in your joints. Um, like for me, I really don't like doing reverse grip curls with a straight bar. I need to use an easy bar. The grip just feels so much better um, and I have friends where they, they can't do it using an easy bar. They're like, it's so painful. So just try out different things and see what works for you. Sometimes neutral grip can feel better where your, your wrists are facing in. All right, we'll do one more, and then we'll move on to our compound lift for back. So again, just slightly bent at the hips, knees in a slightly bent position. Everything's slightly bent. <laughs> Here we go. And you can see the chest is nice and open. We don't want I'm going to lower the weight just to show you what we don't want to do on this, okay? We really, we don't want to be like this rolling, okay? And we don't want the, the spine of the back curved. We don't want our arms like this, okay? We want to open that chest up, bend the elbows slightly, keep the back, you know, fairly straight. See, huge difference. Chest open, shoulders back, shoulders forward. You're not going to get the same muscle activation. You want to make sure that you're keeping it nice and open and it's gonna help you be able to breathe better. If your chest is caved in and closed off, you're not gonna be able to get that deep breath to really help you and get the oxygen to those muscles. So. Um, myself from YouTube asked, do you prefer the rope or straight bar? So it's really good to integrate different grips um, on this. So the other day, I did it with the rope. So that's a great way to keep um, to keep providing yourself with variety so you don't plateau. So different grips, different bars, like on the pull downs, you can use, they have a wide grip bar with the handle, you can do an underhand grip, you can do behind the head, you can do a little more closed grip. Um, and on this, you can do really wide grip like that, pull it down. You can do the rope, which provides you with the neutral grip where you're pulling down. The one thing with the rope is you really have to be careful that you're not getting the motion at the elbows. I find that with a lot of clients that are new to this exercise, I have to go with the straight bar. Otherwise, they automatically just want to do tricep push downs. Um, so another question from Tomination Time on Twitch. How do you like streaming a workout? Anything surprising you, or what surprises you about live streaming your workout? <laughs> um, or any difficulty? You know, well, I really like answering questions because usually this is only something I get to do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and when I do it by myself, it's hard for me to look at all of the questions and then answer them while I'm doing my workout. So it's nice that, that I can have, you know, the team here moderating the questions for me so I can really answer. And I like providing the tips. So it's not 
as much about me getting my workout in as far as taking you guys through the workout and demonstrating the different exercises for you so I can really show you the tips that will really help you with your form. Even if they're just very minor, it's amazing what those small tweaks will do to your gains. So, All right, we are going to move on here. Oh, I've never used this before. Yeah, let's do it. So this is essentially the same thing. I'm going to show them. Okay, some of you may already be familiar with the different attachments, right? So this is called a straight bar. This is a wide grip bar with the just regular handle straight bar. This is called a V-bar, okay? A lot of times, you can actually do pull downs with the V-bar too, which is great. I saw Flex Lewis the other day doing tricep push downs with a V-bar. I've never done that, but I want to do that. And he was doing them like, like that. Flex is cool, okay. Anyway, so essentially, this is the same thing as this. This just looks different because um, it's made by someone else. It's kind of fancy and I like it, so we're going to use it. Um, unless, do you want to use the, do you want to use the other side so you can have, no, doesn't matter? Okay. So we'll do, we'll do this. So these are cable rows. So the difference between compound lifts, and I mentioned it earlier, and isolation lifts. Compound lifts, multi-joint, right? So think about what I'm going to do right now. A row. I'll just show you really quick just so you can see. Okay. Range of motion at two joints, shoulder and elbow. And with the straight bar, it was just at the shoulder. So that's more of an isolation single joint exercise. So I did the isolation first so I could kind of pre-fatigue my muscles and now I'm going into the bigger lift so I don't have to lift as much weight. Um, so I have a question from Flaming Champions 92 on Twitch. Uh, what was your inspiration towards going into fitness? Oh, um, you know, I just really wanted to be in shape. I, it was when I left the music industry, I always worked out a little bit before, you know, and I would lift like light weights and mainly just a cardio queen because I didn't know a lot about lifting. I played sports, but no one ever taught me about the weight room. Um, and then when I went back to school, I was sitting around all day eating like Funyuns and just really bad things. And so <laughs> after a while, I was, man, I really need to get my butt in shape. So I found a program on bodybuilding.com actually. That was what started it initially. And it was amazing. It just changed kind of my life. You know, I got strong. I started feeling great. And, um, and so I just started pursuing it after that. Yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Amon from Facebook asks, uh, Amon from Facebook is wondering, what should be the post-workout supplements to add? Okay, so some people might not uh, like this so much. I don't take a lot of supplements. I take a pre-workout, which I took today. Um, I like to go off of whole foods, so I will just eat a meal after I train. And it will mainly be protein and carbs and have some veggies in there. So I'll do complex carbohydrate like sweet potato or brown rice or oatmeal, usually brown rice. Brown rice is pretty much a go-to for me right now. And any kind of meat source, you know, I try to stick to the leaner meats and it can be red meat, fish, chicken, doesn't really matter. Um, but I stick to whole foods. There's, there's two reasons for that. One, uh, it will keep you satiated longer, and two, your body has to work to break that down. Whereas if you drink a protein shake, it's really good for some people. Some people really, really need that, especially if you're a guy and you know you eat a lot of meals per day. Sometimes you just really need that extra protein drink to help you meet your calories. Also, it gets into your bloodstream faster, but I like to make my body work to process the food. When you drink a shake, it doesn't have to work as much, and so um, you won't be expending as many calories by drinking a shake as you will by eating actual whole foods. All right, so I am not going to do a warm up on this one. I'm gonna go straight in here. I might not be able to do as many reps since this is a brand new grip for me, but I'm gonna try it online for you guys because that's what you do in the gym. You try new things out and if you fail, you fail. You know, you figure it out while you're doing it. So um, here's the failing. <laughs> you fail to succeed.
and I realized that I don't really like this thing, so I'm gonna change to the V-grip, because it does something weird with my hands. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe my hands just aren't big enough. That's what happens. Small people, we get problems up in the gym. When I do curls on the cable machine, sometimes I gotta stand on my tippy toes, or if I'm doing a rope attachment, I have to hold it at the very bottom, and then the rest of the rope hits me in the face. It's a good look. <laughs> And so with these, you want to make sure that you're not self-spotting too much and leaning back too much. Um, and you also want to keep your core nice and tight and keep that chest open again, you know, not letting the shoulders round and it cave in. Um, I like to keep my elbows in nice and tight too when I do the exercise. So, yeah. <laughs> I will get a drink of water also. Yeah, I don't take a lot of supplements. Um, I try to get all of my macro micronutrients, so, you know, the big, the big ones through real foods. I got a question from YouTube uh, from Robert Begnell. Any pause or squeeze in the low pulling rope? In the, in the low pulling rope? Yeah. Oh, in the low pulling rope? You can, so since I'm doing, um, the lighter weight and I'm just kind of repping it out right now I'm not doing any kind of you know holding the contraction or anything like that but you can definitely do that in fact um, I had a client I have a client who's training for an NPC men's physique show right now and we did um, well we, we do a lot of stuff but I made him do um, a pyramid set and then like drop set on this down the stack so we just start at like you know 190 and go down the stack and at the end when it gets to the lightweight I'll make him hold the contraction and he'll hold it for you know three seconds and we'll drop the weight and then he'll hold it for six seconds and we'll drop the weight so it's you can do all kinds of things with your training to get variety in there it just depends on you know what your goal is but that's a good one uh, so this is from Twitch. Uh, Miss Dust Bunny has a shout out. She says, girl, I feel the, those short people problems at the gym too. Yes! Yay, short people! It's so true! It's so true! <laughs> Some of the machines are built for like Frankenstein. Like, what, who was this made for? Not me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. So, he was asking about holding the contraction. So, I can... Let me, let me demonstrate, um, I'll, do, I'll do a pyramid set. So if you don't know what a pyramid set is, this is a more advanced technique and you can do a pyramid set, a reverse pyramid set. So um, sometimes I get confused and can't remember which one is which because I just use them interchangeably. But you can either go from a higher weight down to a lower weight and do more reps and then back up to a higher weight and do less reps so that's a reverse pyramid and then a regular pyramid is where you do low weight high repetition go up to higher weight lower reps and then back down to a um back down to a lower weight and do more reps so i'll do i'll do a regular pyramid okay so we're going to start at 30 pounds and i'm going to do like 15 reps and then we'll go up to 50 pounds and I'll do okay well we'll, we'll just figure it out while we're doing it <laughs> all right so here we are 30 pounds 15 reps one two three so this is a pyramid four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And this is for if you're really looking to push yourself in the gym, pyramids are no joke. So we'll go up to 50 and I'm going to do, we'll, I'll do 10 reps, okay? <clears throat> One, two, three, four, Six, ooh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. That thing gets stuck. Okay, now we're gonna go up to 70. And I'm going to do five reps, and then we're gonna go back down the stack again. 
All right. Ooh. One, two, Ooh. three, four, oh, five. All right. Going back down to 50 and we're gonna do 10 reps. And now I'm starting to sweat because this is legit harder than <laughs> what I was doing before and you get no rest. So if you wanna burn yourself out and be sore AF, then do pyramid sets. <clears throat> and then throw in a drop set at the end where you just increase the weight and go all the way down. You have a question? Yeah, okay, so we have a question from Twitch. Uh, Tomination Time asks, Christina, what myths and misconceptions are still around that you wish would die? In particular, any myths or misconceptions for women that you want to clear up? Um, that's a good question. I think it's just the same old thing, you know, women are going to get bulky at the gym. And yeah, I get it, some of us gain muscle faster than others and we have different builds and I addressed this a little earlier. You can tailor your program to fit your goals and what you want and your body type. You know, my sister, if I built a program for her or some of my other clients that are more weight loss and they don't want to build big, big muscle and they're not trying to gain weight, I would put them on more of a high intensity program, you know, where they have a lot of cardio acceleration or hit, you know, um, in between their weightlifting sets and I would keep their rep range higher in the 12 to 15, 15 to 18, even, you know, up to 25 reps as long as they have the conditioning there. That's something that you have to work up to, but that's definitely a way to, you know, get the muscle tone and the lengthening of the muscles um, and not get the big mass building. But again, like I said, we don't have as much testosterone as men. It's just not gonna happen, okay? You are not going to turn into a female bodybuilder just by food and exercise alone. It's just not gonna happen. So you would have to take some kind of enhancement drugs to really get to that point. Yeah. How many sets and reps are you doing for your pyramid? Um, so for the pyramid, I'm basically combining all of the sets so I'm not taking a rest in between right now I am to answer questions um, but it, it depends on the weight so you can do pyramids ranging from you know you do 10 reps 5 reps 3 reps uh, 5 reps 10 reps or you can do it higher rep range where you're doing like I, when I built my legs up I did leg extensions and I would literally do 50 reps, 25 reps, 15 reps, all the way down and then all the way back up until, you know, and you just go until you hit all of your reps. So, yeah, I'm gonna go back in here. What was this? This was 10, okay. Down to 30, 15 reps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ah, 10, getting tired, 11, 12, 14, woo. 15, all right, yeah. Try the pyramid set, it's really good. <laughs> You're getting a lot of love for your new haircut. Oh good, yay! Thank you, it's crazy hair. <laughs> okay, so we did a pyramid set, and I could demonstrate a drop set too, actually, on this next one. What's the question? Um, Danny asks, is it a low rep with higher weight better for fat loss than high reps with low weight? Okay, high reps with low weight. Like, so low reps versus high weight. Versus not, not necessarily, no. I mean, if you're building, um, you know, more muscle mass, uh, so it, it takes more calories to sustain muscle mass, okay? So if you have more muscle mass, you're going to naturally be burning more calories in a day because you have more muscle mass and it takes more calories. Um, but no, you can burn calories doing a high intensity workout and doing um, conditioning training like what I'm doing now in the higher rep range. If, if that were the case, then I wouldn't you know, have the conditioning that I have and be able to burn all the calories. It's, there's a, 
there's a fine line and also it's really good to switch your your program and do phases you know where you can do big strength building um, you know in the five to eight rep range or then you cycle off to a higher rep range you know but the the conditioning is a big deal even just throwing the hit in there that's gonna that's gonna make you lean if you start adding jump rope in between your big lifts I mean you can superset you know the big the big uh, muscle building lifts in the low rep range with some high intensity stuff like jump rope. I mean, think about boxers. They are strong and shredded and they do hella hit, right? Lots of jump roping, lots of, um, you know, bag training and things like that, speed bag, and that is, that is cardio, so, yeah. Uh, we have chat asking to hear you sing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, look up, I'll, you can look up some old stuff that I did. Type in Be Mine, Christina and the Dolls, or just type in Christina and the Dolls and then click on the video search in Google and you'll see it pop up. The hair looks similar, except it was straight and it was a bob and it was black with like orange bangs. That'll pop up, that's old school. That's old school rock and roll. <laughs> that was back in the day. But be ready for the new stuff, Lay Destroy, follow me. You can sign up on my website, laydestroy.com and then um, I'll send you an email when the music comes out in August. What, what? <laughs> All right, so what was the drop set? Okay, this is it. We're gonna do one more of these and I'm gonna do drop set, okay. Oh, snap. Okay, I'm gonna go to 85 just because I haven't been lifting uh, super heavy since recovering from my injury. But before, I used to do really heavy rows, like 130, you know, 145. I mean, that was like maxing it. But I would do full sets at like 115. So, but now we're gonna do a drop set at 85. So basically with the drop set, what you wanna do is you're not aiming for a number of reps. You really wanna go to failure because that's how you're going to really break down those muscle fibers to really get the gains. Um, you know, but like I mentioned before, you don't want to compromise your form. It's a fine line between pushing yourself to failure and then messing yourself up. <laughs> so, all right, so we're at 85 pounds. I'm just going to go to failure and then I'm going to drop the weight and continue to drop the weight. I'm going to go all the way down the stack for you guys. So it's not, you know, a double drop set. It's going to be essentially a, a, you know, huge drop set. Oh, that's heavy. Breathe. Okay, two more. All right, last one. All right. I'm gonna go down to 60, so I dropped it by two. I'm gonna go to failure. Make sure I have my form right before I start. drop it one more time. I'm just going to go to 50 so I don't have to do as many reps to fail. Two more. Last one. That will definitely get you sweating. The drop set is, it's no joke. It's definitely something that I recommend you integrate into your program. If you feel comfortable with it, try it, add it on a few exercises, see how you feel. All right, so we got a couple. So the first one's from Facebook. Uh, Mel and Garita says, awesome leggings. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the camo print. Uh, the second one is from Mac on Twitch. How much cardio do you do? Hmm. Uh, it depends. If possible, I like to do more high intensity stuff. Like today, I'm not doing it, but I usually do jump ropes, medicine ball slams, um, you know, mountain climbers if I can, since I'm recovering from um, a surgery that I had a while ago. Um, but I'm starting to integrate that more into my program. And then not as much steady state cardio. Like, you know, when I'm at, when I can do all of my hit, 
then I'll do like 30 minutes of cardio. Right now I'm kind of getting in anywhere between 30 to 60 minutes, just depending on how I feel, since I can't do all my hit. Then one more question from Facebook. Uh, Sherry Walsh asks, when you start to feel your muscles give up, is it better to go on or just push it until you can't go on? Um, so it's better to push it until you feel like you're going to compromise your form. And really that comes from experience and the more you do it, um, and really listening to your body and focusing. Once you hone in on the muscles that you're really supposed to be using, um, and when you feel like you're not utilizing those anymore and you start to feel your form compromise, then you want to stop, you know. You don't want to stop too early, but you also don't want to push yourself too far. And a lot of the thing I get from clients is like, oh, I don't know if I'm using the right muscles, you know, because you kind of lack the muscle tone in the beginning and that's why you're working out. So um, there will be a point where you will start to feel like, oh, hey, I can actually feel it in my back now when I work out back. But before you don't notice it because you don't really have the muscle mass there. Um, but yeah, just keep going until until the form is not is not right. You feel something that feels off and then and then that's when you want to stop. Are you doing another drop set? Huh? No. No, that's it. We're done with the drop sets. We're going to do some shoulders now. But I am starting to sweat now because of the pyramid and the drop set. Both of those are really good and not necessarily to employ in the same day. I was just doing that to demonstrate for you. Um, but but they are good to utilize at certain instances throughout your training. Like I mentioned, I use the pyramid sets all the time initially when I gained um, muscle on my legs. My legs were my lagging body part, so I naturally have a little bit stronger upper body. Um, and to have my legs catch up to my upper body and really get that balance um, and symmetry in my body um, for performance, I really had to kind of train my legs a lot and hard to get them to catch up. So. Uh, this is from Aisha on Facebook. Uh, what advice do you have to get the shoulder cap on top of your shoulder? Okay, so really, um, you know, you see women that have, like, their shoulders look big and they look nicely developed and, like, toned. Losing body fat is an um, integral part of that. And then also, um, Isolation lifts are really good for that. So what I'm about to show you right now with the side lateral raises um, and circuit training for shoulders. So combining a bunch of shoulder exercises and doing them kind of back to back and, and high rep range. You're gonna wanna build some muscle mass training in the lower rep range sometimes, but also you can combine that with things like shoulder taps, which I could show you right now that are really good. And also um, supersetting something like shoulders with uh, sand bell slams or medicine ball slams are really good. So here's, here's um, shoulder taps. These are really good and you can integrate these in between basically anything that you're training. I like to combine them with upper body because it's kind of um, upper body and full body. So you wanna be in a nice plank position, keeping that back nice and flat. We don't want the butt up in the air. We're not doing you know, a, an up dog or whatever. Um, tapping the shoulders. And the more narrow you keep your stance in the back, the harder it's gonna be, which will also be better because you'll be working harder. You can go like this if you need in the beginning, but try to get those feet together and not to, don't rotate the body and do some weird stuff. Try to keep that core nice and tight and flat. Tapping the shoulders. Yeah, that'll be really good. That will burn your shoulders out if you superset that with some um, strength building exercises. Okay. I'm gonna start and do just a quick warm-up set with the fives. Your shoulders are a minor muscle group, so I'm not training only shoulders in one day because I don't, um, I'm not looking to, you know, gain a bunch of mass on my shoulders. And because they're such a minor muscle group, it's really easy to kind of overtrain your shoulders. And I want to say overtrain, injure them, you know, by training them too hard or too frequently. Because I used a bunch of shoulders on those back exercises I did. Shoulders are pretty much going to be used in any upper body workout that you do. So for me, I don't want to, you know, train them too much and then end up injuring them. So um, I'm just combining them with the back workout. So I'm going to do some side raises. And for the side raises, I like to start with the dumbbells in front of me. 
Um, you can hold them to your sides and keep your elbows slightly bent and bring them out more in a diagonal fashion. But I like to hold them here, keeping the elbows more slightly bent and bringing them out to the sides. I can really feel it utilizing that um, side delt right there. So I'm going to do 10 reps and just warm up with these fives. Again, knees slightly bent, Five. elbows bent in a lock position. Last one, well, I guess I did 12 reps, that's okay. All right, so that was a nice little warm up. And this, I'm starting with the isolation exercises on shoulders too, so right, that was single joint. And then I'm going to do some front races, which is also single joint. And then I'm going to switch to an Arnold press, which is my compound lift, multi-joint. Uh, do you follow a ketogenic diet or form of carb cycle? Uh, I do carb cycle, yeah. So um, I'm not doing as much of it right now since my training has been, you know, uh, it hasn't been the way that it used to be when I was after, before my surgery. So now that my workouts, I never know kind of how much I'm going to be able to fit in. Um, I just kind of stay to low to medium carbs and I do have my fats in there. Um, but I used to cycle through the carb cycle depending on you know what my training day was and how much cardio I did. But I highly recommend carb cycling. It is amazing. I always see the best results in all of my clients by carb cycling. Uh, this is from Karen on Facebook. My right side seems stronger and is getting more developed than my left. How can I correct this? Okay, so you can do um, isolateral training, okay? So that means that any exercises where you can separate it into your right side and your left side, that's what you're gonna wanna do. And you always wanna start with your weak side. So you can't overtrain a weak side, but you can kind of undertrain a strong side, right? Just to let the other side catch up. And so I notice um, on things like tricep exercises, for some reason my left side is so much stronger than my right, which is weird because I'm right-handed. But anything like tricep pushdowns, if it's single arm, I'll always start with my right and then go to my left. Um, and that has really enabled my right side to kind of catch up to my left. So that's a really great way to correct those problems and I highly recommend it. And there's lots of exercises where you can do that and separate it into, um, you know, the isolateral training. So one side at a time. Yeah. All right, so I'm grabbing the tens. And with this exercise, the side lat raise, you don't, you don't have to, um, I mean the, yeah, the side lateral raise, you don't have to go super heavy on this since it is just single joint. Again, you're seeing me doing a little rest pause just so I'm not pushing myself um, through it, you know, compromising my form. You definitely notice that I'm not getting a lot of swinging. I'm not going up on my tippy toes and using any kind of momentum, keeping my feet planted on the ground, keeping the body from, you know, swaying a lot and just really focusing on the muscle. MBN Cheese on Twitch wants to know if it's better to do compound lifts first. Okay, so um, it's just a different style of training. There are lots of techniques you can use. And the reason why I wanted to demonstrate this one is because most people actually do the compound lifts first, right? Because they're your big lifts and most people are aiming for like PRs and maxing out on things. And that's really great um, because they're the big lifts and you wanna be able to dedicate your energy to it. But there's also a principle um, for using isolation lifts first and really fatiguing those muscles because once you get to your compound lifts you're going to be using some of the minor muscle groups to help you push like in a chest press where um, if you've pre-fatigued your chest then your triceps aren't going to give out before your chest hopefully they'll be more on the same page because a lot of times on the big lifts you'll have a minor muscle group fail and you can't keep pushing past it and really fatigue the major muscle group that you're trying to train so all right
seven. Last one. Okay. So we have a question from Aisha on Facebook. Yes. Uh, would you suggest slowing the tempo for better time under tension? So you can slow the tempo for time under tension. Um, if I was going to slow the tempo, I would want to go lighter weight because right now, um, slowing the tempo at this weight would be a little bit more difficult for me. So um, when you're doing the tempo training, you want to pay attention to the type of weight because if you're lifting at a heavier weight, it can be a little bit more dangerous and more difficult for tempo training. Yeah. And like I said, with this, I'm doing the 12 to 15 rep range, so I'm really focusing on keeping my, my heart rate up. So the form is still really good, everything's really good, but I'm not going for the um, maximum time un under tension and things like that. This is more of a um, conditioning workout. So keeping the heart rate up and, and getting the reps in. Just different styles of training. But it's all good to employ. Variety is key for um, not, you know, getting stuck and hitting a plateau. I do get a lot of clients that will come in and they'll train very slow, but when you're trying to really um, burn fat and go after the conditioning, sometimes the time under, temp uh, time under tension and like the tempo training, the slow tempo training is not uh, going to be ideal for that. Uh, so we have a question from Alexandra on Facebook. Yes. Uh, she has stubborn hip fat. Do you have any advice to help <laughs> get rid of that besides doing abs exercises? Oh, okay, actually, um, there's really no spot losing. You can only spot train. But in order to really um, lose body fat, you kind of have to do, you have to lose it all over, right? You're not just gonna lose it in one spot. And so I would really recommend adding some jump rope and high intensity interval training. That's really gonna help keep your heart rate up and burn fat. And it's better than uh, steady state cardio. You'll burn more calories in the 24 hour period following your workout if you do some HIT training which is you know, high intensity intervals in between your lifts as opposed to doing steady state. So I really recommend um, doing that. No ab, you don't have to do the ab training. Ab training is for building muscle, it's not for losing body fat. I mean, you'll gain muscle and that will help you burn more calories, but um, do the high intensity interval training. All right, so I'm going to do some front raises now. So um, this is another isolation exercise for your shoulders. Again, always we want to keep the elbows slightly bent on these shoulder exercises. And if you notice when I bring it back, I'm not getting a lot of momentum and swinging. I'm bringing it back and stopping it. So 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get some water here. Whew. Shoulder exer shoulders, and especially with these um, exercises, if you haven't done them a lot, the single joint um, for some people, they might have some initial pain, and so that can be about playing with your form or even just building the muscle, um, and you'll feel better about it. With rear delt raises, I had some pain initially, um, but then after doing them more and building up my muscle, it was like they're one of my favorite exercises now. So, so question from Twitch, our savior DJT: How do I get a smaller, how do I get smaller glutes as a guy? Squats seem like a bad idea. Just run. Well, so squats actually aren't a big glute 
builder. A lot of people say, oh, do your squats, you'll build giant booty. Not really true. Um, it will utilize your glutes, but that's not the primary muscle group. Primarily, you're gonna be working your quads when you're doing those. And especially if you don't get really low in your squat, you're not gonna get um, the engagement of the glutes and the hamstrings as much in your squat. So if you really want to um, take the emphasis off the glutes, I would say do box squats and don't um, get super low and focus on the quads. And if you want to do something like lunges um, and hit it more on the quads, I would say to uh, make your stance smaller or your strides smaller when you're doing them. You'll get less uh, glute and hamstring recruitment. Thirteen, shake it out. Fourteen, fifteen, okay. So, question from Facebook from TJ. Yes. Do you find it better to have your shoulders rolled forward and lats out for front raises, or have your shoulders in a good standing posture and keeping them back? I like to keep my shoulders open, you know, not necessarily pinching at the shoulder blades, but I also don't want to roll at the chest, right? So you just want to keep, keep it nice and open is the goal. Yeah, so rolling, pinched, just open. That's how I like to keep, keep it for the shoulders. It's going to help you get, be able to breathe easier and um, it feels better and it's more natural for the range of motion. Okay, one more of these, then we're gonna go on to the Arnold press. So nice and open. See, so this is open. This is rolled back. Weird. Okay, and then rolled forward. That's really actually hard to do. Partially could be from my voice training. I have a lot of clients that have um, trouble with posture. I think a lot of people do, and that really, um, comes from sitting in the chair and leaning over a lot, you know, and working at your desk anytime you're typing on the keyboard. Um, it makes it really easy. So some good exercises to really make sure that your chest stays open, especially when you're breathing, is just stand up against a wall. Make sure your shoulder blades are touching it. Bring your arms up and try to keep them close to the wall and breathe out. And keep those shoulders against the wall instead of when you're exhaling, you know, kind of caving in. So that'll, that'll help. It's a good breathing exercise. Dust Bunny saying this woman is awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. It's so nice to interact with all of you. And um, feel free to, you know, interact with me on my social media platforms outside of bodybuilding.com. There, there will be workout stuff on there. And then also, you know, cooking stuff. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to hit me up. I like interacting with everyone. So, <sighs> all right. Hmm. Make sure you drink your water and breathe, you know? It's important. Don't hold your breath. You're gonna pass out. <laughs> okay, now since my shoulders are already pre-exhausted, because we're doing the pre-exhaust method today, I'm going to stick with the same weight and we're gonna do some Arnold presses. And I'm telling you, I feel it already in my shoulders. All right, so. Again, keeping the knees slightly bent. Two, 
Last one, 12. Oh, definitely harder after doing the isolation lifts first. I, I definitely recommend um, trying the pre-exhaust method with the isolation lifts if you haven't done it. I'm sure you'll get to your compound lifts and be like, why is this so much harder than it usually is? <laughs> I, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, you have any questions? Um, I see some. This is from Luna on Facebook. How do you stabilize your spine with Arnold, pre Arnold presses? Um, keep the core nice and tight and keep the knees slightly bent. And so you don't want your hips out. You kind of want to, I don't know if you can see that, tuck them under. So instead of out like that, just tuck them. Get the core tight. Not here. Like, it's so funny. You see a lot of people on social media doing exercises, training in the gym, taking pictures, and you see these girls doing some wild stuff because it looks good on camera, right? You'll see them with their butt arched out because it looks good for the camera, but that is not the way you're gonna actually be doing these exercises. Um, that, that's not, not the right way for the majority of them, even though it looks good on camera. Um, you know, tuck it under, keep the core nice and tight, legs slightly bent, and just really focus on the balance, you know? Once you focus on that, it should come easier. Uh, what's the difference between doing Arnold seated versus standing? Um, so standing, you are going to be utilizing more of your core, right? And if you're going heavier on standing, there are definitely ways where you can um, can compromise your form. You know, if you're going too heavy, you can start arching your back more and really mm, pushing, and you can tweak your neck out sometimes. Um, if you're really gonna go for a heavy weight on the Arnold press, I definitely recommend doing it more seated and really plant those feet into the ground. Um, but if you're not going for, you know, a low rep range with heavy weight, I would recommend standing. You're gonna burn more calories and utilize um, more energy by standing because you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to stabilize yourself, you know, as opposed to being seated. So, actually, I will show you seated, um, just to show you this. Some of you may already know if you're more, you know, intermediate or experienced in the gym, but I get a lot of people that don't, uh, they don't know how to get the weights up for a lift, right? So. There, there are different ways you can do it. I've got that, the mic thing on my back, but I'll just show you guys anyway. So, um, actually this is not a good one because it's too high for me because I'm short. I said small people problems. All right, so here, and to get the weights up to do like a shoulder press or something, one knee, one knee, all right? And then you can start your lift, right? One knee, one knee. Especially helps if you're going heavier. With the tens, it's not really an issue, but um, if you start getting up in the weight, it can, be, it can be a big deal. And you can do the same thing when you're doing a chest press. So a lot of people don't know, you can put the weight on your knees and then help stabilize and roll back. So just, just a little tip to help you. So, you. so you look like you know what you're doing <laughs> when you go in there instead of feeling awkward and self-conscious. All right, so here we go. Like I said, keeping it slightly tucked, right? I'm not out here, I'm not arching the back, I'm not doing anything crazy. We're here, knees slightly bent, pressing through the heels into the ground, stabilizing the core. So not here, here. And I'm not doing any kind of you know, not that. We're not using the momentum from our knees. Did you get that? Yeah? So we're not here, okay? We're And now I'm tired. <laughs> that was it, actually. So I usually try to do, you know, 
three to four working sets of each exercise. So that's after, after the warm up. Um, Travis from Facebook wants to know, do you work out through soreness after waiting a day or two? Or what do you watch for when working out through soreness? OK, so you always want to give yourself 24 hours um, between training the same muscle group. So if you train legs, then you train something else, and then it's time to train again, and it's been 24 hours, there's nothing wrong with training while your muscles were, are sore. If anything, that's going to help get the blood flowing um, to those muscle groups and can help repair them, actually. So um, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're not feeling you know, overly sore like you injured yourself. Sometimes I'll have clients or even myself, um, family members, will be sore. If you train hard enough, your legs will be sore, you know, two or three days after. And there's nothing that says that you can't train them just because they're sore. As long as you give the muscles at least 24 hours um, to repair. And that's what's good about splitting up the muscle groups instead of doing full body, is that you can hit different muscle groups on different days. So when your back is sore, you can train legs, right? That makes sense. So Question from Twitch here. Headfist wants to know what type of workouts would you suggest for someone who's looking to build muscle and stay a little lean? So I would, again, I'm like such an advocate of high intensity interval training, especially for, um, you know, whether you're trying to gain a lot of muscle mass or if you're just looking for the conditioning aspect. You can train in the five to eight rep range and really lift heavy and push yourself and gain a lot of mass as long as you're eating and pair that with the high intensity interval training that will keep you lean but you'll also be training in the rep range to really um, see some of those gains just make make sure that you're eating properly make sure you eat before you train make sure you eat after you train make sure you eat in the morning um, just make sure you're fueling your body right because you can't you can't out train a bad diet number one that's it Tell them where to find your social media. Yes, also. okay. So, again, my name is Christina Olson. I'm a bodybuilding.com athlete. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's underscore Christina underscore Olson. My name is spelled with a K. You can also find me on Facebook, um, and you can find my music on uh, it will be on all the streaming platforms in August you can subscribe on my website laydestroy.com and follow Lay Destroy Music on Instagram and uh, Facebook and, and all of that if you have any questions please reach out um, I really enjoyed interacting with all of you it was a good time so I look forward to hearing from all of you and I hope you enjoyed it <laughs>